Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands before the Lord this morning and from the depth of our heart begin to give God the glory, appreciate Him and celebrate Him. What a joy it is to see the last Sunday of this great year of 2017 and the last day of this year. One more time, thank Him for seeing this day in His presence. Appreciate Him and give Him the glory. Blessed is the one that He chooses and causes to approach Him that He may fill Him with the goodness of His house. He has drawn you into His presence again this morning and therefore we owe Him thanks, we owe Him praise, we owe Him glory. Lift your voice and appreciate Him. Lift your voice and celebrate Him. Glorify the name of the Most High God. It's worthy of praise, it's worthy of glory. Is somebody giving thanks this morning? Father, we give you the praise. Blessed be your name. Now begin to ask him to speak to you today by his word. Lord, we are in your presence for a word from you. Unveil your word in our direction. Let our eyes be open to see. Let our ears be open to hear and our hearts open to receive. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come this morning with gratitude in our hearts for the privilege of being in your presence, particularly on this last Sunday and the last day of this great year. We give you all the praise and all of the glory. Accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. We are before you on your word this morning asking that you speak to us again. By your word, let everyone experience a change of level. We give you the praise and the glory because we know it's done already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. If somebody believes, say loud, amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand and please, you may be seated in his presence. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord. As a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. We began looking at a series of teachings in our Sunday services, the course of this month entitled Overcoming Forces That Stand Against Fulfillment of Prophecies. Overcoming Forces That Stand Against Fulfillment of Prophecies. Remember? The theme of the month has been spirituality secures destiny and eternity. And the scripture makes it clear, the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 5, 15. It said, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender grapes. So the scripture makes it clear, therefore, that there are many foxes, they may seem little, but they are destroyers of the profit of our engagement with God. And we must therefore locate them and take them out until the foxes are uprooted. The prophecies cannot be manifested. It takes the uprooting of all the foxes that stand in the way of fulfillment of prophecy to see the prophecies manifested in our lives and destinies. Let us remember that according to scriptures, every prophetic word speaks loudest at the end. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, For at the end it shall speak, it will surely come, it will not tarry. All that God has spoken concerning you is surely coming to pass. And that means that you and I, therefore, must remain tireless in our walk with God in order to see his word come to pass in our lives. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and verse 9, it said, do not be weary in well-doing, for you will reap it in due season if you faint not. Therefore, it means that our engagement must not only be instant, but be steadfast. We must obey all the way to the end. Every commandment of scriptures is for all time. And therefore, even in this very last day of this great year, we must adhere to the commandment of scriptures. And as we begin to see these forces and these forces, I see every one of these forces that may be operational in any life being uprooted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what are some of the forces that stand against the fulfillment of prophecy? 
We are going to look at three of them this morning. Number one, beware of murmuring. Beware of what? Beware of murmuring. We must recognize that murmuring does not secure the pity of God. Rather, it secures the anger of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, it says there, Neither murmur ye, as some of them murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Beware of murmuring. Murmuring against God. Murmuring against his word. Murmuring against his prophets. It secures the anger of God, not the pity of God. We must come to understand that God does not tolerate grumbling. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6, it said, Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Neither say before the angel that it was an error. But look at who reacts when we speak wrongly. He said, wherefore should who? God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of your hands. In other words, every wrong speech is reacted to by God himself. When we begin to murmur and complain, God is agitated. God gets angered. Murmuring never secures pity from God. Rather, it provokes the wrath of God. We must beware of murmuring. Now the question is why must we beware of murmuring? We must recognize that murmuring is a proof of ingratitude. It is a proof of ingratitude. Every time you are murmuring, what you are simply doing is saying to God, Lord, I am not thankful. You have not done enough. We are simply saying to God that we are not thankful. We are showing to God that our feeling is that he has not done enough. And please hear this and hear it very well. At every point in time that a man is alive, there is more working for him than working against him. The Bible says that there is, he said, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. He said, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. You see, the truth is this, a lion can secure your fear as long as he's alive. But when a lion is dead, you find people posing with pictures around him. A dog is more feared than a lion as long as it has life. In the same vein, what God is saying is that every time a man has life, he has hope, therefore he has nothing to complain about. That is why Psalm 150 and verse 6 says, Let everything that has bread do on, praise the Lord. If you are living, what you owe God is praise and thanksgiving. Everyone that is alive owes God praise and thanksgiving. If you begin to look at all that God needs to do to keep you alive, you will realize that you and I owe God quality thanks. I've shared before that I went to a hospital some years ago to pray for somebody. And while in a discussion after praying for him, they began to tell me he had a problem with his blood. That he was inside, they couldn't put oxygen marks on him because there was no way his, the oxygen could enter into his blood. So they had to pump the blood out of his body and mechanically put oxygen inside the blood before putting the blood inside the body. And I asked them, how much does this procedure cost? And they said, it costs 9,000 pounds per week for him to take oxygen into his blood by the help of man. That is why the Bible says, send help for vain is the help of man. There are 52 weeks that I've just completed today in this year 2017. You have been taking in oxygen freely. You have not needed any me mechanical assistance. No one has a right to honor, to murmur. We only have the opportunity to give God thanks. Will you lift your right hand to heaven and say, Jesus, thank you. Amen. One more time, say louder, Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Like you really mean it, Jesus, I thank you. Amen. From that experience, I came to the conclusion that man is too expensive 
to be managed by man. There is no one that can manage you. Can you imagine if it costs that much to put oxygen into the blood? Ask those who go through dialysis and they tell you how much it costs to process your urine and bring out waste from your body. It costs too much for man to, to, to manage man. And that is why the only one who can monitor, manage, and help man is God from on high. And any man, therefore, that has breath in his nostrils must at every point in time give God thanks. Will you lift your right hand again and say, Jesus, I thank you. So, we must never murmur because it is a proof of ingratitude. The second reason why we must never murmur is because murmuring destroys. Murmuring destroys. The Bible makes it clear to us in Psalm chapter 28 and verse 5. He said, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the oppression of his hand, he shall destroy them. Who is it that will destroy them? He shall destroy them and not build them up. In other words, the reaction of God against murmuring and complaining is invocation of destruction. The Bible says in the book of Joel chapter 1, verse 11 and verse 12, it said, all of the harvest of the fields, it said they are perished. Why? Because joy is withered away from the hearts of men. When joy departs from your heart, the fruits of all your engagement are destroyed by God. And that is why you and I must at every point in time maintain a heart of gratitude. Refuse to murmur because murmuring destroys. It is possible for you to have labored all year serving God and then destroy it by a murmuring mouth. It is very possible because the Bible said that all of the harvest is destroyed. Why? Because joy has departed. Therefore, today I see a new release of the spirit of joy coming afresh upon somebody here. You believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So ultimately, murmuring provokes destruction. It provokes destruction. Number three reason why we must avoid murmuring is simply because murmuring causes God to resist man. Murmuring is actually a sign of pride. When you are murmuring, you are simply saying to God, God, with all you have done, I'm bigger than it. It is a sign of pride. And the Bible says, God resists the proud and he gives more grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 6. And that is why you discover that every time murmuring is provoked, God becomes an enemy to the murmurer. In Numbers chapter 11, the Bible says, verse 1 down to verse 3, it said, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. God had done so much for Israel, brought them out of Egypt, taking them into the, the wilderness on their pathway to the promised land. Yet at every point in time, in spite of all God had done, what they kept saying was what was left to be done. They kept complaining about what they desired, not appreciating what had been delivered. Please hear this and hear very well. Every time you complain about what you are desiring, you are neglecting what God is delivering. And you must understand that what God is delivering is far more than what you are desiring. At every point in time, I tell people all the time that no matter your state in life, your present position is somebody else's prayer point. And that is why you must at every point in time continue to give God thanks. Where you are now, somebody is praying to be in that position. You have a job you are complaining about, there is a jobless man praying for a job. You have health and you are complaining about not having what to do. God is saying that health you have, there is a rich man praying for health. No matter what your present state is, there is something about your life that is somebody else's prayer point. 
And that is why at every point in time, you must never see place to complain, but rather opportunity to offer gratitude to God. Lift up your right hand again to heaven and say, Jesus, I thank you. Like you mean it one more time, Jesus, I thank you. This is so important because every complaint complicates your matter. There is no issue that improves with complaint. Every situation gets more complex with complaining. The more you complain, the more God withdraws his hand of help and the more frustration is seen. But the more you appreciate, the more you instigate God's action to step into your matter and to bring about your testimony. I see somebody here experiencing the good hand of God in this very season to bring about an outstanding testimony. Amen. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So beware of murmuring. Number two, beware of depression. Beware of depression. Beware of depression. In Habakkuk chapter 3, the Bible says, beginning from verse 17 down to verse 19, it said, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall there be fruit in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. He said, Yet I wait. In the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. He will make his, the Lord is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk upon my high places. So God is simply saying, no matter your situation, it is not an excuse for depression. No matter your situation, your circumstance, it is not an excuse for depression. Every situation man may find himself in is a temptation to be depressed. So you must at all times recognize it is a bait of the enemy. Depression is a bait of the enemy to bring about destruction. So you are now at all points must rejoice in the Lord always, no matter what things may look like while you are waiting for prophecies to be fulfilled. In Philippians 4 verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So God is saying at every point in time, what I am expecting from you is continuous and consistent rejoicing. Continuous and consistent rejoicing. Continuous and consistent rejoicing. And this is so important because we discover that God can only tolerate an atmosphere of joy. You don't necessarily, inv necessarily invite God by simply calling him. You invite him by preparing an environment for him. And the environment that is prepared for God's presence is the environment of joy. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11, it said, thou will show me the path of life. For in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God's presence requires joy. Anytime a man is joyless, God is absent. But when the man is joyful, God is presence, present. The presence of God requires the presence of joy. You cannot experience the manifestation of God's presence without preparing the environment with joy. And that is why the devil's temptation at all times is to keep you down. Because if he can keep you down, you are keeping God out. He tries to make you cast your head down. And that is why as believers at every point in time, you must speak to yourself. David said, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Hope down in the Lord. He said, for a dying expectation is from him. So you must at every point in time speak to yourself. Refuse to be cast down. Refuse to have your head bowed low. At every point in time, let your eyes keep looking up to the hill from where your help comes from. Because your help is coming from above. Shout hallelujah. 
I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. This is so important. Now, we must recognize that depression is a function of noticing Satan more than God. When a man is depressed, what he's doing is rather than celebrating the works of God, he's observing the works of the devil. He's looking at what the enemy is doing in his life rather than looking at what, what the loving father is doing in his life. It is a product of wrong observation. Wrong observations. Looking at the wrong things. That is what brings about depression. But when a person is looking at the goodness of God and all that he has done, the only thing that begins to emanate from you is joy, praise, and thanksgiving. I pray today that whatever has been making anyone make wrong observations, that temptation of the enemy is broken over your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, whatever is making anyone make wrong observation, that hold is broken off your life in the name of Jesus. If you look at the story of Abraham, Abraham had a word that came from God, Romans chapter 4, beginning from verse 17 to 21. And the Bible tells us there, he said, as he said, who against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of nations to that, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He said, and he was not weak in faith, and he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He said, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, doing what? Giving glory to God. Now for him to do that. Look at what the Bible said in verse 19. He said he was not, he was, verse 19, he said, being not weak in faith, he considered not. He was not looking at the wrong observation. The wrong observation would have been that you are 100 years old. The time has passed. Nothing can happen anymore. That is a wrong observation. But rather than that, he said he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Why? He said, being fully persuaded that what, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. He was fully persuaded. He refused to look at what the enemy was pointing his eyes at. He was a hundred years old. Even people must have been mocking him. At 100, at this point, you are saying you are expecting a child. How can you have a child at this age? Look at Sarah, your wife, 90 years old. To have a child at this stage, it must have been all around mockery. But yet, he refused to stagger. He didn't make wrong considerations. You see, anything that brings your head down is a wrong observation. Anything that causes your heart to sink and to be cast down is a wrong observation. And that must be fought, we must fight vehemently against it. We must refuse to make such observations. Rather, look at what God has said. Look at what God has promised. And let your persuasion be complete. That he that has promised is also able to deliver. Even today, being the last day of 2017, God will still surprise somebody here. You believe it, say loud, amen. I say you believe it, say loud, amen. That is why the Bible admonishes you and me in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. It says there, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In how many things? In all things. In Ephesians 5 and verse 18, the Bible tells us there. He said, giving thanks always, giving, verse 20, sorry, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks how many times? Always. So there is no downtime. Every time is thanksgiving time. We are continuously giving thanks at all times. We are celebrating him at all times. We are we are rejoicing before him at all times. This is so important. So thanksgiving is vital and we must therefore beware of depression.
The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and verse 48. It said, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, he said, for the abundance of all things, he said, thou will serve thy enemies. God forbid. Somebody say, God forbid. In other words, God will not receive what is not offered joyfully. Your service, your thanksgiving, anything that you don't do with joy, God is not interested in it. God is not interested in it. I remember hearing a story of a teacher and his students had had a very hard time all through the term. And each one of them, each one of them was simply begging him just let my people go. You know what they call let my people go in terms of school? Just give us a let my people go so that we can move on to the next term. And this was the third term, secondary school students. And they are begged and begged the man because every one of them was on the way to failure. The man therefore said, no problem. I will give you a very simple exam on your last examination. So he asked them some questions. Number one question number two question, number three question, and then number four question, he simply wrote on it, congratulations. Number one question was a very hard question. Number two question was a very hard question. Number three question was a very difficult question. And number four question was congratulations. And each one of them struggled with number one, struggled with number two, struggled with number three, and they got to number four, and they saw congratulations with a question mark behind it. <laughs> and nobody exactly knew how to answer the number four question. So, every one of them did what they could with number one, with number two, and with number three, and then submitted their question papers. By the time he was to mark the paper and brought out the marking scheme, Number one was appointed some points, I think 10 points, two, 10 points, three, 10 points, and four, 70 points. You know why? Because at the end of congratulations, he said the only answer is thank you. Shout hallelujah. For them to pass the examination, the only thing that was required Instead of complaining about number one, number two, number three, was just to say thank you in number four. Is somebody getting what God is saying? The first quarter of 2017 has come and gone. The second one has come and gone. The third one has come and gone. And the fourth one is coming to go. Only one thing God is asking you is to say thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Say louder, thank you, Jesus. Like you mean it, thank you, Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, we must refuse to fall for the temptation of depression. You know the problem of those students? After seeing number one question, number two and number three, depression fell on all of them. Every one of them missed the opportunity to pass the examination by appreciation. If you want to pass the test, thanksgiving is the answer. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? If you want to pass the test, thanksgiving is the answer. So beware of depression. Beware of depression. Number three, number three force that stands against fulfillment of prophecy that we must watch out for is don't stop giving thanks. Don't stop giving thanks. And I'd like us to again examine this verse of scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter five and verse 20. He said, giving thanks, how many times? Always. You must recognize that thanksgiving is an always responsibility. 
giving thanks always. And it says always for how many things? For all things. So Monday is Thanksgiving time. Tuesday, thank him again. Wednesday, thank him again. First day of the year, thank him. Second day of the year, thank him. Middle of the year, thank him. Last day of the year, thank him. He said, thank him always for all things. In Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. We must recognize that we have a responsibility never to stop giving thanks. We must give thanks always for all things. So thanksgiving is a responsibility that we have at all times. There is no time that we don't owe God thanks. God's servant our father said he was in a vehicle with a man of God coming from Capernaum, the old church site, old church location, down to Canaan land. And on the way back, as soon as they entered Canaan land, the man of God looked at him and said, from the time we left Capernaum till here, you have said, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Glory to your name. 72 times between there and here. That is what they call giving thanks always. Where thanksgiving is like excelling. It is the breath you release out at every point in time. Jesus, thank you. Glory to your name. I celebrate you, Father. Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father. I see that grace coming upon somebody here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thanksgiving must be an always responsibility. At no time should you be thanksgiving barren. At every point in time you are located, you should be offering thanks unto God, celebrating his faithfulness, glorifying his holy name. That should be the only language that is known to come out of your mouth. Shout hallelujah. You must recognize that if it is in your heart, it will never be far from your mouth. Because the Bible said, a man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. Luke 6.45. So if thanksgiving and gratitude is the attitude of your heart, it will naturally be coming forth from your mouth. You will find yourself continuously giving God thanks. Look at what the scripture said in that Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. He said, giving thanks unto God always, unto God the Father, and unto the in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us, if you look at verse 19, verse 19 down to verse 21, it says, speaking to yourself in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs, singing and making melody where? In your heart. So when it is in your heart, it will come out of your mouth. When you are grateful within, it will naturally find expression in your mouth. When God's servant was in that vehicle, it was not aware that anybody was in the car counting his thanksgiving. It was just a natural expression. If it is not in the heart, it can't be in the mouth. It was inside the heart, so in the middle of their conversation, they talk a little, thank you, Jesus. Thanksgiving inside the heart will naturally come out of the mouth. So our hearts must remain grateful at all points. And why is this thanksgiving so important when it comes to fulfillment of prophecy? In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, the Bible tells us, it said, in everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, the Bible says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So the promise, the prophetic package, is only delivered after you have done the will of God. And what is the will of God? Thanksgiving. So when we give thanks, we are doing the will of God, which secures for you and I the promise. If you want to see prophecies fulfilled, in your life as an individual, then you must be committed to giving thanks always. Celebrating his faithfulness, 
giving glory to him from the depth of your heart. David said in Psalm chapter 56, verse 4 and verse 10, he said, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. He said, in God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. He has not seen his work yet, but because he has seen his word, he celebrated him. He's given him glory. And every time you celebrate his word, you will see his work. And that is why you and I at every point in time must continuously give God thanks. Remember, no prophetic word can be brought to pass without the hand of God. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 15. He said, that which your mouth has spoken, Unto my father David, he said, with his own hand, with God's own hand, he has fulfilled it. So it takes the hand of God to fulfill the plan of God. But it takes thanksgiving and praise to secure the hand of God. He said in the book of Psalm chapter 22 verse 3, he said there, he said, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So praise is the habitat of God. When you create the atmosphere of praise, of thanksgiving, of glorifying his name, you have created an atmosphere for God to step in and to begin to manifest his power in your life and your destiny. That is why thanksgiving and praise is vital if you and I will see prophecies fulfilled. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, a prophetic word came. It said, you will not need to fight in this battle. It says, set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And the Bible says that in verse 22 down to verse 24, they appointed singers and the singers began to praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they began to celebrate him, what happened? The Lord himself stepped in and laid ambushment. The hand of God was invoked as soon as they began to offer praise and thanksgiving. If you and I will see the prophecies that God has spoken concerning us completely and fully delivered, we require this very important instrument of thanksgiving and praise. I pray that from this day forward, no one's life will ever run thanksgiving dry again. Yeah. At every point in time, you will be giving God quality thanks. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we must continue to celebrate him. Continue to honor him. Never stop giving thanks. Where your thanksgiving stops is where fulfillment of prophecy stops. Where your thanksgiving stops is where fulfillment of prophecy stops. That is why I made it very clear. He said, giving thanks always. So there is no time for you to ever say, oh, I'm not giving thanks today. At every point in time, you are giving God qualitative thanks. Celebrating him, glorifying him, honoring him, remembering that the only way to pass the test is to give thanks. Always, at all times, celebrate the faithfulness of God. Everything that God has done, there is no man that can do one of it for anyone here. No man. The doings of God can never be replaced by man. And that is why you and I owe God thanks. I pray today that that attitude of gratitude will become your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And from this day forward, you will never again miss the fulfillment of prophecy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said you will never again miss the fulfillment of prophecy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In your seated position, lift up your right hand before the Lord and begin to give God thanks, appreciating him again for his word. Father, thank you for your word that I've received this morning. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I celebrate your faithfulness. You are worthy to be praised and to be glorified. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Before we go any further this morning, if you are here in God's presence and you are not yet born again, please hear this. God may gather all into his house, but only the voice of some reaches ears. 
It is not enough to be among the multitude giving thanks. Your voice can only be registered before him if truly you are his child. Therefore, if you are here today and you are not yet born again, you don't have a genuine relationship with God, what an opportunity to make it right with him on this last day of this great year of 2017. You want to surrender your life to Jesus and become a child of God? Quickly rise in your feet with me this morning. I want to pray with you. Quickly rise in your feet this morning. I want to pray with you. All over this place. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as you begin to rise everywhere. You want to give your life to Jesus? On your feet quickly. Secondly, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong along the line. You have found yourself disconnected from God. You may be in church, but you are not truly in touch. You missed a connection with God, and you want to have full connection so that you can be fully restored. This is your opportunity to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to do that? Quickly rise your feet also. I want to pray with you. All over this place, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly rise your feet. God bless you. If you have done that in the first and the second call, please make your way quickly to the closest aisle to you, and I'll be praying for you from right there. You want to respond to the first and second call. It's not too late. Quickly, rise your feet and join them. Get to the aisle closest to you. Officials beckon upon them and assist them getting there. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. He's worthy of praise and of all glory. Thank you, Jesus. Please, at this point, suspend filling your form and just lift up your right hand unto the Lord and from the depth of your heart, speaking unto the Lord right now, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, louder, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, I thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn by your hand unto yourself. Lord, let the grace that has brought each one of them keep them in you all the days of their lives. Give them what it takes, O oh Lord, to please you at every point in time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, concerning them with decree, no turning back, no returning to the vomit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, we ask that every blessing of redemption will answer and speak loud in each one of their lives. We thank you for it because we know it is done already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Congratulations. It's a new day for you in the name of Jesus. Please ensure that you complete your forms and return it to the officials. We'll be getting in touch with you and assisting you via the foundation class which holds on Mondays and it will help you to have a right footing in Jesus and enhance your walk with him. Congratulations. It's a new dawn for you. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise on our feet and give Jesus a big, big hand as we receive our Father to take us further in this service. Make that hand bigger for the Lord. It's worth your praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed this morning? Yes, Give Jesus the biggest clap offering. Yes, Amen. Amen. We are just about to step into this end of year Thanksgiving session. And I'd like you to do this with understanding because somebody's Lazarus is getting out of the grave now. 
we owe God thanks for what he has done for three reasons. Get seated. One, to preserve those blessings. Two, to multiply those blessings. And three, to perfect those blessings. For what he has done, we need to secure them, have them preserved. They can also be multiplied through the mystery of thanksgiving and they are only perfected through thanksgiving. Now for what we expect to be done, we give thanks. Jesus gave thanks. I thank you because you have, I know you have heard me because you hear me always. And at the instance of thanksgiving, Lazarus came out of the grave. How many believe God has heard them? Now, thanksgiving is a medium through which we provoke the release of answers to our prayers. So whatever remains as balance, as you give in thanks from the depth of your heart, Expect them to be released to you. Amen. How many will say a loud amen to that? Amen. How many will say a loud amen to that? Amen. Expect the balance of your package for the year that is yet to reach your hand to be released as we begin to give thanks. How many will say amen to that? Amen. Say with me, my Lazarus is coming out of the grave. My Lazarus is coming out of the grave. That's why Thanksgiving is a mystery. It's not just a principle, it's a mystery. And when you engage with that mystery, you gain mastery over the affairs of life. Expect the unusual to happen at the instance of your thanksgiving now. How many will say amen to that? Amen. God is no respecter of persons. Until you do what he says to do, don't expect to see his hand. It's time to give thanks to the Lord. All through the year, this is 31st, he's kept you on your feet. He's kept you going. He's kept you growing. He has kept you alive and well. You are still on your feet serving the Lord today. Glory to God. This praise we have the choir come around the altar to celebrate God today. Amen. Shall we all stand? Remember, according to Psalm 96, verses 7 and 8. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. Bring an offering. So it's, our thanksgiving is not complete without an offering in our hands. Now if you have your thanksgiving seed, end of your thanksgiving seed, lift them up right now and acknowledge the great doings of God in your life. Acknowledge the great doings of God in your life. Acknowledge his blessings in your life. Give him all the glory for his goodness and his mercy. Would you do that? Give him glory, everybody. Give him the glory that's due to his name. If it has not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, 
when men rose against us, they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. The waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a spirit to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the net of the fowler. The snare is broken and we escape. Now, give him thanks. All through the year, He has kept you and I, kept your family. If you ever lost anything, is the reason why you have not lost everything. Now give him thanks. Give him thanks. Now give him thanks for your balance of package for the year to be released. Give him thanks. If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Give him thanks. Jesus gave thanks and he saw the glory. Lazarus came forth. Now give him thanks. Give him thanks for your conception. Give him thanks for your marital breakthroughs. Give him thanks for your career breakthroughs. Give him thanks for your business breakthroughs. Give him thanks for breakthroughs in your family. Give him thanks and praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Don't ask God for nothing today. Give him thanks. In everything and for everything, give him thanks. As you give him thanks, the balance of his blessings package for the year for you shall be released supernaturally. Give him thanks. It's the most impactful prayer to pray. Thanksgiving prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Now lift up that seed. This Thanksgiving seed is declared blessed. Amen. Your Thanksgiving will multiply by it. Amen. Every day, every month of next year will be worse than the whole year of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. so shall it be. Amen. Now, to have it done orderly, please get seated. Ushers will rush, collect the Thanksgiving seed, and as soon as you have dropped your own, you join us in the praise. It's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give Him thanks from the depth of our heart. Are you ready for it? Amen.
to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. lift up your two hands to heaven and one more time in your own words begin to acknowledge the good hand of the Lord upon your life begin to acknowledge the good hand of God upon your life begin to acknowledge the good hand of the Lord upon your life Begin to acknowledge the good hand of the Lord upon your life. Zerobi Galada Tone, Edrobi Garada Tonam, Aso Pareke Nekotane. Begin to acknowledge the good hand of the Lord upon your life. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. I said in the first service, in the name of Jesus Christ, that our engagement is not enough with the truth, we must engage with serious mindedness because only a serious approach guarantees a glorious result. If you will diligently hearken, put that word seriously hearken, and seriously observe to do what I tell you to do, I set on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. Many are just simply religious, they are not serious. You can be very religious without any trace of seriousness. <laughs> May the grace for serious engagement with the truth be your portion in the year ahead. When it's time to give thanks, to give thanks seriously. When it's time to praise him, you praise him seriously. When it's time to pray, you pray with seriousness. When it's time to give, you give with seriousness. Not casual about anything. Is a way up. God must mark you out for seriousness in the year ahead. You will never pray any more absent-minded prayer. You will not engage any more with absent-minded praise. You will not study the word anymore with absent-mindedness. Yeah. You will not engage with God with nonchalance anymore. Yeah. My soul followed hard after thee, O God, and thy right hand upholded me. Serious engagement. The guarantee for glorious return. Serious engagement. Grace to be serious with God. Serious with his word. Serious with your present in his presence. With your presence in his presence. I decree that upon your life today. Show me any serious minded student. He's on his way to becoming a first class student. It's the way it works. Any serious minded businessman is on his way to becoming a business giant. Anything you are not serious with, you don't make much out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's the way to it. Lift up your two hands and receive grace for serious minded engagement in your work with God from hence on now begin to receive begin to receive begin to receive is one vital key to assessing your glorious realm in redemption thank you Jesus I'm blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the remaining hours of the day, don't ask God for anything, but thank him for everything. I thank you for my miracle job. I thank you for my miracle marriage. I thank you for my miracle children. I celebrate you, Jesus. That family said, we came here and camped with God. December 31st, you said, Camp with God. We came and camp with God. And today they came with a set of twins. 
Today they came with a set of twins. Now, get serious with God more than ever since the year began. Cancel all non-productive appointment. Keep a genuine appointment with God in serious thanksgiving. Thanking him, not scorning him. I thank you, Jesus, for my health for free. Don't spend 9,000 pounds to catch oxygen into your blood. I thank you, Jesus, for keeping me on my feet and keeping me in the faith. My greatest asset in life for keeping me in the faith. And I thank you, Jesus, for my Lazarus that is out of the grave. I thank you for my business that has seen the light of the day. I thank you for restoring my marital destiny. I thank you for restoring my head. Thank you, Jesus. And do it seriously. Do it what? Seriously. I have, by grace, been serious with my God. 48 years have come and gone. I just enjoy Jesus. He's never offended me. I told Jesus when my wife was sick that to heal her is not what makes you God. Whether you heal her or not, you are my God. You are my God forever. If I was still writing my Volkswagen B2, it would be my God. I won't be any less committed than I am today. Set to with God, it will settle your issues. Set to with God, it will settle your issues. Now, go in peace. Return with your last minute testimony. Return with your last minute testimony. Return with your last minute testimony. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Tonight is our cross overnight. And it starts at 10 p.m. One of the features of the night is the blood of sprinkling ministration. Amen. And it's going to spark your new dawn. After the order of the children of Israel, who march out of 430 years of captivity like a dream of the night. And enter into their dream land. By the blood of sprinkling tonight, you are entering into your dream land. Yeah. They were eating for free for 40 years. They enjoyed total head 40 years long. And till you meet Jesus, you won't beg for water and food again. Yeah. Till you meet Jesus, you never suffer a setback in your head. member of this church must partake of tonight. And that's why we're having the live broadcast to all the locations where we had it during Shiloh. Everybody must have the opportunity of being sprinkled with the blood for entrance into their dream land. A new dawn. A new dawn. A new dawn. Is somebody excited? Those who need to, you better come with Jesus on ground here. I mean, one night or the day from now. I've slept in the open several times on the mountain. Come with Jesus and make the most of this season. Cancel all appointments. You don't need all these appointments. You have a whole year for it. And set to with God. Come with Jesus and watch out for the best ever till date in your life. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Sure. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord. And as a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. Congratulations. Can you congratulate one another right now for seeing the last day of 2017? Give him thanks for entering into the year 2018. 
with fullness of joy and gratitude to God.